Welcome to Hacks We Share. In part one of this video, I put a thread here on the end of this pipe, and in part two, I thread the inside of this coupling to make a nut. I hope you enjoy it. When I was planning my hydraulic cylinder video involving this bit of pipe here, I put the word out to friends and relatives for anything they could get me which uh, resembled a hydraulic cylinder. And a few days later this turned up, which is a piece of four inch cast iron rainwater downpipe. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. I'll cut it here and then I'll trim it here and I'll put it between the two chucks to see what it looks like. Well, I managed not to break the blade, which is always good, so I'll swap it round and trim the other end now. This is how I left my lathe set up from the last video I was making and you can see that I've drilled these indexing holes around the back plate of this chuck. I'll get this chuck moved over to the tailstock, I'll put a chuck on this end, get this off the bed and we'll get the pipe set up and have a look. If you saw the video where I made the back plate for this chuck, you know that I used a front wheel bearing here and uh, I pressed this shaft into the bearing and a number of people have remarked that it was too tight a fit. Now it needed to be tight to hold this on and for the chuck not to fall off this shaft but equally being a bit tight yes the bearings are a little bit stiff. I have to admit it I've kind of thought it was okay they are slightly stiff but you live and learn don't you and I do have another one of these front wheel bearings from a Ford Focus Mark 1, I think it was. I could press this out, I could relieve this shaft a little bit, put it in and put a retainer at the front, at the underside of this back plate. But as for now, it's fine. It's just a kind of lesson for the future and i just saying that I accept that it is maybe slightly tight. Anyway, I need to get this bush off now. If I had a tapered drift, I would just put it in there, but I don't. So I'll just use this three-legged puller and that will go on there like that. And actually I know that it is, it is to be fair, it is a little bit loose now. There you go. <laughs> that's how I did it earlier. Just showing, that's all. Just saying. There we go. So that can now go in the tailstock. I've reversed the jaws on both chucks. And I've lined it up using the tool in here because I can't clock it, it's too irregular to clock. I've left this running for about 15 or 20 minutes now. Nothing's getting warm here. So if the bearings are a little bit tight, which I think they maybe are, it doesn't seem to be having any uh, detrimental effects anyway. I'm going to try and cut a metric 1.5mm pitch thread on here. And then these pipes, these rainwater down pipes, as they come down the side of a house, they have a pipe length that goes into a socket on the top of the next pipe and so on. And I've got one of those sockets and what I'm going to try and do is to machine a female thread on the inside of one of those sockets. Now, why am I doing it? Well, I'm doing it to build up my experience and I'd like to see if I can do it. Will it go wrong? Probably yes, there's so many possibilities for this to go wrong. So first of all, um, this pipe isn't truly round. It's a lot flatter in this area. And the pipe is only at most 4.5 mil thick. Hang on. 
there we are so you can even you can probably see from there you know it's thinner here it's thicker over here and so on and by the time I've cleaned this up I may be almost through the pipe now I need about a thread depth of one mil so you know we're already into kind of <laughs> risky territory now it may be that as I clean this up I choose not to fully clean this area we may leave this stripe on or I suppose I could cut it to there because there's a raised seam here and that would get me a chance to clean it up all around but I don't know step by step let's see what happens this is the pipe socket I was talking about so obviously that came out of there and what I plan to do then is to cut this off here and this should this area here should have enough material that I could thread it internally I'll clean it up I'll cut these ears off just to make it a bit nicer and it should end up like a big nut that threads onto the end of the pipe Well it's starting to clean up, you can see it's taking quite a bit off there, but here it's just rust and over here it hasn't taken the paint off yet. I keep adjusting it very slightly to try to get it more central but the pipe isn't round, that's the problem. Anyway I'm quite optimistic that this will clean up enough to thread. I don't know about the rest of it here. It's all very wobbly. <laughs> we'll just have to see, won't we? Part of the experiment. Good morning. When I'm machining this, it seems I have more rubbing than cutting. And I watched a YouTube on machining cast iron and I learnt that if the cast iron is allowed to cool too quickly and is chilled, the surface can get extremely hard and difficult to machine. Well anyway, uh, it may be that my carbide has got a bit dull, but I will try with a bit of high speed steel. It's a good cut that. You can see the greyness in the surface, which means it's cutting into it nicely. If you look there, look how polished that is, how shiny that is. Well, that's where I was using the carbide, where this high-speed steel tool hasn't touched it yet, because I did adjust the chuck slightly. It's quite a difference. Now I've cleaned up my pipe, I need to turn my attention to cutting the thread. And I'm going to cut it with a pitch of 1.5 millimeters. That's arbitrary but it's what I've chosen. And when I look in my Zeus tables, it tells me I have a thread depth of 0.92 millimeters. I'm going to cut the thread, and here's the cutting tool here shown, with the top slide over an angle of about 30 degrees. Not more than 30 degrees though, because the internal angle of my thread is 60 degrees. And if I swing the top slide over, like that, it means I'll just cut on the front edge of this cutting tool here and it reduces the stress on the tool and it will give me a cleaner cut I think. So if I need to plunge in by 0.92 millimeters, but actually I'm applying my cut here on my top slide, I need to work out what depth of cut I want to apply on my top slide because obviously it's going to be more than 0.92 millimeters. So, I hope I've got this right. If I draw this triangle here, right angle triangle, this is my angle adjacent opposite hypotenuse. Well, basically it's cosine that I need. Cosine 30 is 0 0.866. Divide that into 0 0.92, gives me a cut on this top slide of 1.062 millimeters. Now, if I had a proper nut for this pipe that was formed in a factory, quite honestly, I just keep cutting the pipe until the nut fitted. 
but because I don't, because I'm cutting both the male and the female, I just want some kind of guide as to how far to cut. Now, a big caveat on this, I am no expert. This is what I've just figured out now. It could be wrong. <laughs> Tell me if it is wrong, but it could be wrong. Because quite often I do this and I've applied the cut that I intend and it's still not right and I end up cutting more. The next thing I need to do then is to cut myself a relief at this end and this end so that when I come to the end of the thread I can stop the tool and it'll sit within that relief channel. Now this is very very close to this chuck so I've had to lock the saddle to make sure I don't grab the wrong handle and uh, drive the tool right into the chuck. Here we are. Wish me luck because uh, I could end up parting this tube off or it could snap and it could be the end of a beautiful relationship. Well that's two reliefs cut one millimetre deep, either end of the length that I'm going to thread. I didn't break through anything, so the signs at the moment are quite good. I've swiveled the top slide over to 29 degrees. I've put my cutting tool in. My multifix only indexes to 40 positions, so that's every nine degrees. So to get the tool lined up perpendicular to the work, I've just got the tool slightly swiveled in the holder. And then I've just used this, put the tool up against there and made sure the tool is square. If you're not happy with that, then I can just do that and make sure the tool is square onto this jaw. Now I'm happy with that now. And also, I need to make sure the tool is going to clear this face when the tool is at that end like that look, and in by a millimetre. And it looks like it will. Oops. <laughs> I will take the light off first though before I do that. This is my screw cutting gearbox. This plate has two sides, and the side showing now is for the gears that I have installed at the moment, which is 25, 60, 100, 120. I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see better. Now it might appear that the coarsest thread that I can cut with those gears is 0 0.9 millimeter pitch. But in fact, when I worked out all the ratios on the PC, I found that there were some further along here, coarser, which were not shown on this table and the implication was to get those pitches you needed to change to a different set of gears. I'll show you the table I'm talking about. So this is what I created on the computer, actually three separate tables for different change gears and this bottom table here is what we're referring to for those particular gears that I've got installed, 2500, 60, 120. Now you see there, there's a one in orange, a 1.5 and a 0.75. Those are valid thread cutting pitches, which do not appear on the plate on the side of the gearbox. So the implication from what's on the gearbox is to get a thread pitch of 1.5 millimeters, which is there in green, you need to change the gear set uh, for screw cutting. But in fact, I can get 1.5 by just selecting this position here. So that means both levers to the left and the third lever to the right. I'll try that, I will check it with a gauge, but I'm pretty sure that will work fine. Now, I've recently added an email address to my channel. If you look at About on YouTube, you'll find the email address. If you have a Harrison 140 and you want this table, email me and I'll send it to you. 
It's not going to be much use to anybody else unless you've got one of those lathes. But you're welcome to it anyway and I'll send it as a PDF or something. So this should be set for 1.5mm pitch. Left, left, right and this in the rightmost hole. The other thing I need to do is to engage this dog clutch here to put the drive on this lead screw. Next we turn our attention to this plate on the side of the saddle and I can see 1.5 there and it tells me that I can engage the half nuts lead screw drive at any position on the screw cutting dial indicator. I don't know if you'll be able to see this but measuring that pitch it is indeed 1.5. I've cut my thread to a depth of about 0.5 millimetres so far and I thought I'd just explain the cycle that we go through to do this. With this dial set to zero, I put my cut on to the top slide. Start the lathe, engage the drive, let it cut to this end, disengage the drive. Wind this out, wind the carriage along back to this position here put this back to zero, put my cut on, engage the drive and go round and round that cycle. I'm only putting on a cut of 0.05 millimetres each time, so I'm really taking it steady. And perhaps the other thing to say is, when I'm engaging the drive from the lead screw, I just put a gentle pressure on that and I wait for the timing to be right and then the lever will come up and the drive will drop in. If you really pull on that lever hard, it's possible it could pick up on the lead screw in the wrong place. It wouldn't drop into the thread on the lead screw, it could ride on the top of the threads on the lead screw. And then of course that would wreck your work. So I'm having to remind myself of all these things because I don't cut threads every day of course. I've finished cutting the thread. I did make a couple of small mistakes which I've managed to recover. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to say the thread's done now. So next I need to cut this end off which I'll have to do with a hacksaw. But I'll start with the hacksaw in the lathe. Perhaps a bit unusual to be hacksawing like that on the lathe, but I know that if I cut it freehand, I would just go wonky all over the place. And I've worked on this until I just feel it starting to break through. So maybe you can see, just there look, it's just breaking through. And at that point I could feel it in the blade and I stopped and I'll just finish that off by hand now. I'll take this pipe out of the lathe, do it on the bench. Right, tell the truth, who was betting against me on this? I know I was, but it worked. Now to make the nut. <laughs> 